Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this simple class. It is a pin and it's a pin that uses two canes that I have included on the channel. So I'll put the links to them so that you can make them if you wish. Otherwise, you can use your own canes. And, uh, and I think this is a project that lends itself to those canes. All right, so you guys know I try to make these classes simple and I, it, because it's my hope that if you're a beginner or let's, let's say that you don't even know if you want to work with polymer clay, that maybe watching some simple classes will help you make that decision. I hope you decide to work with polymer clay. I do know it's confusing. I do know that. I remember that. And it is a confusing medium because of the sheer diversity of things that you can do with it. So sometimes, you know, if you absorb so much information, it can almost be paralyzing. I know that. So if you find yourself in that position, I would say just pick a project and start. Because it's the doing that will teach you more about the medium than anything else. Now, what I hope to do in my classes is give you some best practices so that what you make looks more professional, finished, whatever. Uh, and that is one of my goals for you. So, having said that, if you like this class, uh, I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll also hit the like button. And, uh, hmm. I think that's all I have to say for now, because you know what? We got a pen to make, so let's make it. So for this very simple pen, and I'm telling you, it is very simple. Now, the uh, construction is simple. The co individual components are up to you. Now, this is uh, the beaded curtain cane. The instructions are on the channel, accessible to you. And this is that four day cane I made. So you can also watch this class <laughs> if you want to use this cane. But the thing I like about this, you can take your own round cane. You can take your own pattern cane like that and do it and use that instead, okay? Now, when I do these very simple classes, I'm really trying to make sure that you don't need a lot of unusual equipment or materials. I'm hoping that these are the things that we use, you have. So it's not a huge investment. Now, also these classes are kind of geared to people who might not have the most experience with clay, okay? They're not only and solely for you, but I am a firm believer that people will try clay if they see something that they like, but they also consider doable for them at that point. Okay, so having said that, let's continue. Now, this is my black clay. I did make it from scrap. If you're a beginner, this is also something that you should know. This product is not black clay, it's called black out, and it turns your scrap into black. It is a really, really useful product. It's wonderful. And it's something that we made because we hope to keep a lot of polymer clay scrap out of landfills. Yeah, you can make it useful. It will not end up in a landfill. All right, so I conditioned my clay and I have rolled it through setting number three. Setting number three is fine. This piece is not going to be too terribly thick. Now, I could make it thinner because I'm using a very strong clay. That would be my recommendation to you as well, is use a really strong clay. Don't use a brittle, break a break. <laughs> you look at it, it breaks kind of clay. You know, you're doing your work, your hard work, you're spending your time, use good clay. All right, so I've got a ceramic tile. Now this is also going to help me quite a bit. So I'm going to just work it across like this because this will help prevent air bubbles from forming. Okay, 
little bit of patience there. All right, so let us begin. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is cut a slice from here. I'm going to roll it through my pasta machine. Now, this, the reason I'm rolling it through is because I want, uh, I really want it to be a uniform thickness. Same thing here. I'm going to want it to be uniformly thick. It's a little bit easier to do that with a with a pattern like this, because if I am, have cut the slice slightly thicker, it's probably not going to alter the pattern terribly when I roll it through. This is kind of a different story. You can alter the pattern quite a bit if you don't cut back absolutely perfectly through here. So I'm not sure I'm gonna roll this through yet, but we're just gonna start with this guy. Let me set you aside, buddy. Yeah, it's getting hard because my table's just full, full of clay <laughs> and stuff. Okay, so I don't need a lot of this because this pattern is gonna go across the bottom of the pin. And so I'm cutting this kind of like that. See how thin it is? It's thin. Okay, now let us take this to the pasta machine. Now I'm going to place this edge on the rollers because I don't want it to get wider like this. I want it to get longer this way. So let us begin with setting number two. I don't know exactly how thick this is. Okay, so this whole part of the top didn't even touch the rollers, but the bottom did. And so you can see what happens when that happens. See, this stretched out a little bit, and it got slightly wider, not terribly. Now we're going to go to setting number three. I'm going to repeat, same edge on the rollers. Now this time it curved a little. And when you see a curve like this when you're doing this, it means that the clay was thicker at that point. Okay. All right, so let us roll through setting four. Same way. Okay. Okay. So here we go, and that's where I'm going to stop. Now I can kind of straighten it out just a touch just by stretching. All right, so let us just position this piece across the bottom, like so. Uh, first, first, before anything, I want you to look at something because this will also help you. See this edge, how it's going like that? It's not completely straight. Well, I think I'm going to make it completely straight like that. Do the other side too, because it doesn't hurt me. It potentially helps me a lot. All right, so now I have nice straight, straight cuts. I think I'm going to turn this over. I think I like that side better. I'm going to lower this just a bit. Actually, maybe I'll go diagonally because it looks like this is, you know, this it this is probably about four inches, maybe five inches. And, you know, that would be fine for a pin. However, I am building kind of long. So I think I want to give myself a little more length, just a bit more length to work with. I could, of course, simply take this up and make it longer this way. But hey, the diagonal is longer than the vertical. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to need is we are going to need something gold. I'm going to use gold. I'm going to use this. Let's resin rustic gold. Now, I rolled this through setting three. I wanted to establish first the thickness of the slices before I make this sheet. So I'm going to roll this through setting number three. Oh, I'm sorry, setting number four. See, setting number four. So that when I take this piece, it will be the same 
elevation, the same height as this one. So I had to do this one first. That is my control. Now I don't need a ton of this. So I'm not gonna make a ton. I'm just gonna make that much. Okay, so powders can get a little bit messy. So I'm going to take and put it right there on a piece of paper and hopefully I can contain the mess. It's a goal, it's a goal. Now I'm gonna take my little brush. Hmm, hello, maybe I can scoop some out of the lid first. Now there are, you guys know many ways, I kinda like this brushy thing that's happening. See how like scratched up it is? Kinda like that. I do, I do, as opposed to like the solid gold. Maybe if I just keep brushing, I can keep scratching the surface. This is evidently not a terribly soft brush. The bristles are, must be kind of like the hair on my head. Hmm, I kind of like that. Looks like antiqued brass or bronze or something. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now, of course, you have other options. You could just apply gold acrylic paint if you wanted to. You could use foil. I think we've done foil before. You could even use metal leaf. All right, so let's take a nice clean cut. This goes into my scrap pile. And this is the second element that goes on the sheet. I'm actually going to cut just a bit off the end. I think I would like a nice thin strip up here. Like so. And then the rest of this will go with the bottom. like so. Okay, looking good so far. So now I've got, that's the very bottom. This will be a division between this cane and a round cane. Okay, so now I am going to try, I'm going to do my very best to cut a slice off of this cane that is the same thickness as four. This is my goal right here. You see the thickness, thinness of that? That is my goal. I might make it, if I, if I cut something that's substantially too thick, I'll cut another one. If it's too thin, I'll cut another one, okay? So at some point, if it were really, really a bad day, I might do something else. But for the time being, let's just say I'm going, that's my goal. That's my goal. All right, so it appears to be about that thick. And I'm going to cut, and I'm going to cut very slowly. And I'm watching my blade on both sides as it cuts through. Now, the good thing about this, I don't need the full slice. Okay, see, I made it very thin there. But that's okay, because I don't need the full slice. The pin itself does not feature full slices. No, I just need some. So let's see how I did. That looks really good. Okay, this is my slice. This is the setting four in the pasta machine. I think this is just a very, just a tad thicker. So I will put it down. And let me just kind of gently roll to make the thicker part thinner if I can. There you go. All right, so let's position the first slice. Now I am going to cut a straight edge along the bottom like so. 
and this straight edge will now be pressed up against that gold strip like that. Okay, now let me flatten it just a little bit more, like so. So I don't have a specific kind of arrangement for this. And um, I'm glad I'm working diagonally because this slice is rather large. You know, I could be using smaller slices, but of course I chose to use a big one, <laughs> a big one. So let us take another cut, because I do need two. At least I need two. Doing my best, doing my best. And I think you, I, you've probably heard me say before, this is not a race. It's not a race. Enjoy the process. And part of that is just taking your time when you cut your slices. I When I first started, I was like a machine. <laughs> Cutting like that. Like that there. And you know what? It was okay. But, but it's better now. Okay. So now I'm just going to take this one and place it like that. Okay. Let's just gently roll the top. Okay, now it's time to cut. It's time to cut. So you're gonna take your blade and let's designate the point to be here. One point. And then let's designate the other point to be like here. All right, so those are my two. That's the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna take my blade, I'm gonna bend it like so. And cut, just like that. Now let's remove that side. All right, so that's one side of the pin. Now let's repeat. Now I think it was about there and it was about there. I'm gonna arc it a little further. Give myself a little more room because I may adjust the cut. There we go. Now, as I'm looking at this, I think there's too much black on this side. There's just too much black. Um, so what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to recut and eliminate some of that black, right? Now, I could make it shorter as well. It doesn't have to be this long, but let's begin by just trying to maintain the length. Okay, and see if just by altering the curve, we've created something that we're happier with, okay? And for me, it doesn't bother me that one curve is more curved. This one is a flatter curve. That really doesn't bother me that much. Um, and so I could, I would stop here. I would stop here and just say, okay, well, this is this is what this pin looks like. And uh, that would be fine. But let's say you wanted to continue, that you weren't like me, that you wanted these two sides to be absolutely the same curvature. Well, there's one way to do that is to slice this end off, this side off, flatten the curve here. But the other way is definitely to repeat that curve on the other side. Now, doing that really means that I'm going to shorten it, right? I'm gonna shorten the pin. Now, the it, where I place this curve makes a difference. Do I want more gold? Do I want less gold, more cane? 
You see what I'm doing here? So you're going, you can move that wherever you want it. So I think that's approximately the correct curve. So let us just try this guy. Let's see if we're happy with that. Okay. So I've matched the curves. The bottom looks good. The top looks good. I'm happy, right? Okay, so at this point, you can leave it like this. So you have this perfect spear shape. I happen to think it's a little more interesting if you cut out the black area. And that's what the original pin was. I designed it this way. And then I took my blade and I just removed these black areas. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, when you do this, just take your scalpel and try to cut right along the edge of the canes, like so. And you can easily cut by moving the tile into the clay by moving the blade by moving the clay into the blade hello okay and that's what i'm doing when i move the tile because i am moving the clay into the blade as opposed to taking my hand and moving the blade like that okay so i think you have a little more control that way by holding your hand stationary and then moving the tile and the clay. Now make sure you get a tile that slides. You don't want to use a tile that has like a lot of glue underneath or something. Okay. All right. So here is our pin. I like it very much. What I like too is it's a way for you to use some of the canes that we have already made in, uh, in some classes. So let me pop this in the oven and then when I get back, we're going to finish it off with a little sanding and we're gonna put a pin back or a tie tack on the back. All right, so I just pulled this. Actually, it's a little, it's not hot, hot, hot. It's been in there for a couple of minutes. So it's not like extremely hot. Now, sometimes my clay, and every clay is different, and, you know, I'm just going to tell you how my clay reacts. Sometimes it gets very shiny. Like, the black will get very shiny. So, when that happens, I just take something like this. This actually was clean. So, you can see an impression of this and this. And I just take it, and while it's hot and shiny, you can reduce the sheen by taking something like this and just rubbing it. Now, the cane did not get so shiny. Now, also, if you see any bubbles, any bubbles at all, you can take and either flip this flat onto a surface like this, like so, and let it cool that way. And any bubbling or any anything like maybe there's an air pocket in there, that will flatten out, that will go away. Okay, now another thing I noticed um, is that my Let's Resin, it got a little duller. There wasn't a heck of a lot of it on there to begin with, but it definitely got duller. So if I wanted to restore any kind of metallic gold, <laughs> then I'm just going to take a paintbrush and just paint this area. Okay, yeah. I hadn't put a lot of the powder on anyway, if you'll recall. It was kind of just brushed on the top like that. And uh, anyway, that's what happened. Does it really bother me terribly? Not so much. All right, so let's take this up off the tile. As I said, it's still a little warm. I'm just going to slide this underneath. Like so. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about findings. They should be called hard to findings, which is because they're a good quality pin back is like the holy grail. For me, it's been they've been very difficult to find. When I find them, I buy a lot. The last bunch I bought were actually with Bettina Velker, and uh, they were German. Now I'm almost out of those, and what I actually prefer to use now, because of my diminishing supply of pinbacks, like real pinbacks, is these Titac backs, right? These are great. They're wonderful. Very secure, cheap, well-made, easy to find. So that's what we're going to use for this. Now, I talked to you briefly about using a very sturdy clay. Use a sturdy clay. <laughs> we are going to be taking this, gluing it to the back, covering the whole thing with a very, very, very thin sheet of clay. I don't like really heavy jewelry, like I don't want to put something on and have it just pull on my clothing and drag it down. So you can see the approximate thickness we're working with now. Quite thin. I like it very much. And uh, then the addition of that piece on the back is going to be quite thin. Now this I rolled through setting four. It's too thick going to be rolling this through like five or six. Let's see what five is on my machine. I use an atlas with the thickest setting zero. Here we have this. I'm going to roll this through setting six. And this is where I'm going to stop. Now because I'm lazy. <laughs> okay, I'm not lazy. I'm efficient. I am going to roll. I'm going to take my dual plex. This is dual plex fridgy liner. And I'm going to roll these through setting six again together. Okay, setting six. Now I'm rolling it through setting six again. Now this clay is quite thin and you can see the relative thickness of the sponge to the clay. I think looking at this now, I'm going to drop my setting down to five. Okay, so there isn't quite so much pressure on the clay from the sponge. Setting six, sponge, roll back through setting five together. And here we have it. Okay, now my fear there was that by rolling through six again, that that clay was going to break and get stuck in the sponge. So by making the setting one larger, dropping down to five, making it a bit thicker, that did not happen. Okay, and I got a very nice texture anyway. So let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna take my glue. This, it's a super attack, but it's actually this. That's what was inside of this. Okay. And um, thanks to some of my students, I now break as soon as I can no longer squeeze any more out this way by pushing on the sides. I take a hammer or something and I just break it and free the tube that sits inside. And there is quite a bit of glue left. All right, so I'm gonna leave this for just a moment or two, okay? Just a moment or two. Don't confuse these, these with earring posts, okay? Different animals, different function, different thing. I'm gonna take my ratty brush. My ratty little brush. See all the, see how funny it is on the end? You know what that is? That's glue. <laughs> because I didn't wait long enough. And I just took my liquid and I started applying it. And I picked up glue on the brush. 
I'm not sure it's long enough yet, but you know what? I'm just going to work around it. Applying liquid clay. You could use poly paste too. I don't see any reason to use poly paste to tell you the truth because it is more expensive and for this particular application, it would do the same thing. Poly paste is great when you're like filling spaces, filling voids and you know, you have something odd that you're trying to stick together. A situation where you're afraid that one piece may slide. Okay, the poly paste is stickier, it's thicker, and it will hold a piece in place. Just a tiny bit of glue on the surface of the tie tack itself. Lift. And press. Press it on. While this is nice and flat, I'm going to take a little acupuncture needle and pierce around in case I have any air pockets at all. Okay, let's cut some of this excess away. It just it just gets in the way. Yeah, just gets in the way. So let's just get rid of it. Pick it up, turn it over. Now, because of the post, I can't just lay it flat and cut around. I'm going to have to hold it up slightly. Take my scalpel. Actually, I think this is just a little craft knife. And now cut against the cured piece. Like so, to remove the excess clay. All right. Now I will be sanding after this is cured. Uh, however, there are areas that are definitely more difficult to sand, like in here or like in there. So pay extra attention to the way you trim the excess away in these sort of awkward spaces. Do the best job you can in here so you don't have to struggle with sanding, okay? Just do the best job you can. Sanding the outside is nothing. I mean, sanding these edges, very simple. Sanding in here, a little more difficult. Not impossible, just a tad more difficult. When I cut, I position my finger at the end. So I'm going to take my scalpel and cut to my finger. Like so. This side is cut. I have one last cut to make. The back looks great. That is the back. This is the front. All right. Now, as I said, I will paint this, but I do not need to paint it at this very moment acrylic paint I can paint on the surface at any time so I will wait until after it's cured and sanded and then I will paint those final details all right the one last thing I want to do however before curing is put my signature on yeah. here is my box of signature it's enough to last me the rest of my life yeah it is Like so. Now, 
these, this pen is quite light. If you had something that was extremely heavy, you might want to put two pen bags on, right? So that you would be ensured that the, the pen will hang the way you want. I'm not really worried about this because it's quite light. And this pin back is actually pretty close to the center point. I think I'm not gonna have a problem putting it on, arranging it, and, and leaving, letting it go. Okay, so this goes into the oven face down in baking soda, and then I will be back. All right, so this is cured front and back. Now, I'm going to sand, as I said before, the side edge. Because look, it really could use some sanding, don't you think? It doesn't look so great. No, that white stuff, that's actually the baking soda. So I'm using my Aubronet P80. It's a very, very coarse. Like so. I will sand the whole thing. Well, all the way around. I'm not going to sand the front and the back. Okay. Now after I sand it, I'm gonna wash it off, soap and water, dry it, and then we'll do the painting here. Now I didn't wanna do the painting first because uh, I have found that were I to paint first and then sand, well, all this little sand, this grit stuff, it, it seems to stick <laughs> to the paint. <laughs> Not saying I can't wash it off, but uh, I don't know why. It doesn't make any difference if I change up the order, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay, this is looking good. Now, I think I'll dull the points a bit because it's quite sharp. So I'm just going to dull it down a little bit. I don't want it to look round, but I also don't really want to feel this sharp point. For this, I can probably use Oh, P180, which is, of course, not as coarse as P80. And that's working fine. Okay, so that feels good. Feels good, and it looks good. Now, I have to decide whether I'm going to, or how much attention I'm going to give to the cut areas. I think I can probably do this. You see this curve. Sand that down a bit. I think I'll ignore this and this. These areas, well, I could probably do a little bit, but I don't think it's critical. This is really what we're going to see right here and right there. Okay. Turn it over. Let's give this just a few strokes. Just to clean it up a bit. All right. All right, so let me wash this off and I'll be back. Whew. Okay, so let's do some painting. Now I buy these brushes, they're dirt cheap <laughs> from Timu. And I'm going to use my good old standby iridescent rich gold by Liquitex. I like this paint very much. It's not too Thin. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? This will make my life easier. I'm going to rub this off. I'm going to tape this off. Okay. Could be easier. Stick that in the water jug. So, let me find my tape. I'm just looking for my scotch tape. It's here somewhere. Hey, studio. Okay, I'm cutting. I'm going to find my tape. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I didn't find my scotch tape. It's here somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. I just used it. Uh, but I did know where my blue painter's tape was. So that's what I have going on here. You see, I've just blocked off. Oh, certain areas makes my life just a bit simpler. Just a little bit. And why not? I could even dab this on with my fingers if I wanted to, which is normally the way I paint. If you guys have watched any of what I do with paint, it's usually, yes, finger painting. Finger painting. Because I am a bad painter. Decided I want to learn how to do watercolors. Am I asking for trouble? Ah, uh, could be. Could be. If I get any paint on the edge, all I'll do is uh, sand it again. Not a big deal. So I'm going to put this on, let it dry, and probably do a couple more coats just to get some decent coverage. It's looking a little bit. Fingers. <laughs> Fingers work best for me. Okay, I'll be back. I'll be back when this is all painted. So here it is. I put a couple, excuse me, coats of gold paint on. I did abandon the brush in favor of the finger. And you know, to tell you the truth, I like the texture of the finger gives the paint. You can see that. Yeah. So I ended up finger painting. Mm -hmm. The tape made it so easy. All right. So that is the end of this class. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was not a difficult class. Quite simple. I will put the links to these two classes in the description. So that's it. Have a great day. I'm Donna Cato. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.